I think many of us here in the West especially have been quite stunned at how readily you and other former military have embraced their new roles. Uh, so my question is, um, do you see this transformation process, which is often described uh, in the media as fragile and still reversible, do you see it this way? Is there any chance of reversal or concern of backsliding? <coughs> Uh, uh, and and uh, the democratic transitions in our country have taken place only not very long ago. Uh, it's only about a year and uh, uh, six, uh, six months ago. Uh, I know we need to move forward, but in order to do so, uh, we need to do two things. Uh, the, uh, first, uh, we need to, uh, there, there has to be stability and rule of law in the country will have to lay down good foundation of, for the economy. If we, if we manage to do that, uh, we will be able to establish a stable political uh, system, a uh, stable democracy. Uh, I don't think that, that there will be any reversal in the political transition. Uh, I also want to add that, like you know, a lot, uh, the, the entire population, 60 millions of them, are uh, also uh, want uh, the democratic system. So as long as that there, there's a stability and rule of law, and and then also economic <coughs> growth, I don't think there will be any reversal. Uh, your government has now reached ceasefire agreements with 10 ethnic groups. Uh, please tell us about that process. Uh, also, we had a number of questions related to ongoing conflict in Kachin State. So any uh, update or status report you can give us on talks with the Kachin Armed Group KIA would be appreciated. And finally, um, how do you see, uh, how do you envision a uh, comprehensive process of national reconciliation moving forward? <laughs> Our country is a multi-ethnic state. Uh, as a result, uh, the, since independence, uh, that the many ethnic minority groups have been fighting against the government. Uh, but uh, the we, uh, lately, there have been that about 10 ethnic groups that were fighting against the government of uh, 11 ethnic groups, sorry. Of the 11, uh, we have managed to make ceasefire with 10. And then the, the we, don't, we no longer see any major fighting in, in the areas where uh, the, those the 10 groups that have made ceasefire with the government are lo uh, located. And, and uh, we plan to, uh, to achieve sustainable peace uh, through three steps. Uh, in the first step, uh, or in the first stage, uh, we, uh, we try to achieve ceasefire agreement uh, at the local level. After that, uh, we try to have political dialogue at the union level. Uh, after that, uh, uh, we plan to hold a very inclusive uh, national conference uh, that will be held in the parliament. Uh, the parliament is made out of uh, representatives of all ethnic groups. So uh, the, I, I think that uh, a very inclusive national conference should be held in the parliament. But the, 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 as you all know, uh, the, uh, uh, the situation in the north uh, is not very stable. The fighting with Kachin uh, and Independence Army is still going on. Uh, uh, the, the problem is that there are some differences that are still uh, need to be sorted out. But uh, from the government side, we have ordered our troops uh, to stop fighting against Kachin troops, but the, 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 our Kachin colleagues have not reciprocated in a similar way. So we'll have to find a way to reconcile our differences. Once that happened, we should be able to reach a ceasefire agreement. And then the, the, I hope that it will soon happen. And then uh, 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 the, in the future, uh, the, uh, uh, for the 
inclusive national reconciliation process that we still have a lot of things to do. Uh, the world have to work on the rehabilitation of uh, the people who will be coming back uh, to their native villages uh, after, uh, after the peace process. And then we'll have to create jobs, we'll have to provide them with food and shelter, and then we'll also have to make sure that the children of these people have access to education and healthcare systems. In your address to the United Nations General Assembly, you said, the people inhabiting our country, regardless of race, religion, and gender, have the right to live in peace and security. Uh, we received a number of questions related to the violence in Rakhine State and the plight of the Rohingya. Uh, you have appointed a national level independent investigation committee to look into this situation. When do you expect the commission to submit its findings and recommendations? And when, once that's done, what will be the next steps? So in fact, the things happened at the Rakhine State was the commonals violence between the two groups, just the commonals violence. So each side committed each other's. So then uh, the affected peoples are from the both sides. So the root cause of this communal, communal violence is based on the mistrust and the misconduct between the peoples. So then the, we have to solve the reconciliation process and also the social harmony of these two uh, communities. So now our, we are conducting the investigations commissions composed of the free and public members from all the walks of lives. So there do have uh, several people from the each religious members, Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, and also Christianities, and also many peoples uh, who are in a very free and very uh, individuals. So because we want to uh, discover the main root of and the causes of the problems. So uh, recently, we also make the, conduct the international workshops on the September 22nd and 23rd. It composed of several scholars, several experts, and several peoples who do have the rich experience in crisis management. So then uh, from those workshops, we also discovered several recommendations. And now we are going uh, to build a roadmap. So, but uh, we still need a certain time uh, to make father's workshops and father's investigations. So, but our goal is to forward the reconciliations and to be the harmonic societies. And in the meantime, one of the root causes of this problem is undevelopment problem. As you know, this Rakhine state is, uh, the connectivities of the Rakhine state is still very poor. The infrastructures are not yet developed. Uh, the, the peoples are facing the scarcities of jobs, opportunities, and uh, we do need to develop the infrastructures development and also the human resources development in those uh, areas for the both communities. So, and some, uh, we need to change the culture of the people, because the societies is very constrictive at this moment. So those are the challenges we are facing now, and we may systematic, systematically uh, establish the process of relief, rehabilitations, the rules of laws, reconciliations, and social harmony, and the sustainable development of this state. And 
we sincerely believe and we have the full believing that we can solve this problem in a certain time. But the times may be decades. So thank you very much for your attention.